Hello, we're here today to go over the function and startup procedures on our SK and SE lathes. Uh, the SE lathes are quite a bit larger than this, but the design and the function is virtually identical, so this should work for both machines. Uh, this is an SK2280. Uh, it does have a few options on it. Uh, easy ones to see, that's an Alors Quick Change tool post. It also has a taper turning attachment. And this machine is also fitted with a full-length rear splash guard. Uh, we also offer the machines uh, with no splash guard, or sometimes folks like a traveling rear splash guard with tra which travels up and down the length of the bed on the back of the carriage. This is the way the machine will arrive at your facility. Uh, when you get it, you want to make sure to be very careful in removing the machine from the skid. And you want to place the machine on the supplied leveling pads and use the supplied uh, leveling bolts, which fit down in the feet of the machine. You can see there, they're used here to secure it to the skid, but that's where your leveling bolts will go and your leveling pads will go underneath those leveling bolts. Uh, for the highest performance on the machine, it is recommended to secure the lathe to the floor using the procedures that are outlined uh, in the manual. You will also see that the machine will arrive with rust preventive, which we also refer to as Cosmoline, on all of the ground surfaces and, and bare metal surfaces. Uh, you'll want to remove this early on. Uh, we have found that a WD-40 in steel wool works quite well, so we'd recommend giving that a try. Uh, also, for the highest accuracy on the machine, it is very important to precision level your machine. We recommend having two precision levels perpendicular to each other on the cross slide, and those have to be pretty much dead nuts all the way down the entire length of the bed in both axes. We would also recommend when starting up the machine to refer to the operation manual to, famil to familiarize yourself with the different handles and levers on the machine uh, and their operation. Now that the machine is on the floor, on its leveling pads, with the leveling bolts uh, precision leveled, it's a good time to hook up the power. Now is a very important time to note the tags on the machine and also the power going to the machine. They should match. So if it says 460 all over the machine, do not hook up 230 to the machine. Bad things will happen and vice versa. Wiring the machine up and starting it is fairly straightforward. Uh, in the electrical box here, you'll see you have an outlet here for your power to come in. You'll be hooking into L1, L2, and L3, and you'll also see there's a spot for your ground also. Once that is hooked up, you want to close the door. You can turn on the power at the wall for to supply power to the machine, and let's turn it on. Now it's time to turn power on to the machine. I always like to have the work light on to help with lighting the work area. I want to make sure the emergency stop is out. Turn on the main power. It's got light here showing you got power. Now we want to check the spindle rotation. Looking at the spindle speeds right here, this is for low, medium, and high. And this is at low would be 30, medium it's 105, and high it's 585 RPMs. Right now it's set up to go 105, and we want to make sure the spindle rotation is correct. On the Willis machines, we have them all set up so the apron handle down is forward. So down is going to get the spindle turning counterclockwise in this direction. Let's see if we did it right. All right. We are in forward. Now we do realize that there are some shops who like to have apron handle, handle up as forward. Uh, we can get that switched around for you, but please, if you want to run that way, please have your people call our technicians because we want to make sure that all the motors are changed over because uh, everything is set up to run properly with handle down and forward. And we can change it if you want, but make sure you guys call our technicians. There are three main gearboxes with oil in them on the machine. 
This is the headstock, and you can see the sight glass, which is right here. Oil should be between the L and the H. That's very clear oil, so it may not be showing up on this uh, video. You also have oil in the gearbox. That should also be between the L and the H. And there's also oil in the apron, and that should also be between the L and the H. You want to make sure not to overfill the oil, as this could cause it to get into areas where it's not supposed to be, and it's not sealed, and you may get some dripping of oil out. The apron here also does pull oil out of the this gearbox, and it does automatically lubricate the bedway and the cross slideway. And you can control that auto oiler by turning it on here. And when you have enough oil, you can just turn that off. There are also many other areas on the machine that should get oiled regularly. Uh, please refer to the operator's manual for types of oil and quantities of oil and locations of where it should go and how often it should go. Changing the spindle speed on the lathe is pretty straightforward. As I showed before, this is medium, and so we're going to be at 105. If we want to run at 30 and low, you just move this over here. Sometimes you may have to hit the jog button to get it into gear, but right now when we go to the apron hand wheel, now we're running at 30 RPMs. Now let's say we want to run at uh, 145. We're at 145 is M. We got to switch from L back to M. Now we'll jog it. Now we're at M, 145. Now we're running at 145. You can see the machine has a very convenient foot brake which will stop the machine quite quickly. Uh, you do have to remember your apron handle is still engaged, but the motor is turned off, so you'll have to reset it back to neutral before that will be able to use, be used again. These machines have very nice tail stocks, uh, very heavy duty. You have a two-speed tail stock. That's in the high range, the low range, which can be nice for drilling bigger holes. You also have a little rack and pinion system here for moving the tail stock up and down the bed. The handle will be in the toolbox. You have two different locks on the tailstock body. This one here, you'll get a wrench that'll fit that uh, nut. And also this lever here is the second lock on the tailstock body. And this is the lock on the tailstock quilt. So please make sure to, when using the tailstock for between centers and or drilling, make sure everything is locked in place uh, before putting pressure on show you a little bit more about the apron right here. Uh, this is gonna be your thread engage lever. This is your feed engage lever. This is gonna change you back and forth between longitudinal and cross feed. This is, uh, the, it controls the tension on the overload clutch that works for both the longitudinal and the cross feed when it's feeding automatically. And again, this is the uh, automatic oiler either on or off. All right, now we're going to show a little bit about the feed gear case and the uh, power feeding of the machine. Uh, here are your feed rates. Uh, we're running at 21 thousandths inch per rev now, which is ACMG5. And you look at your gear setup, ACMG5. And this is closed, so we should be good to go. And this could be a 21 thousandths inch per rev. We'll turn the spindle on. And now to engage the feed, just pull down on the feed lever. Now this will show you the clutch. See how it stops turning? That's the, that's the overload clutch that's built into the apron. That works on the cross feed and the longitudinal feed. When feeding, you can kick out manually here or you can also use these dogs here, which these little cams on the shaft, and those are adjustable. You have four different settings, and you can see those cams there, and there's a little limit switch on the bottom of the apron that'll hit that cam and it'll stop feeding. Uh, those little 
cams, those are adjustable down the length of the bed, and you can rotate them around the shaft as needed. If you want to run the power feed on the cross feed, just move that lever down. And now you're power feeding the cross feed. Back the longitudinal, and we'll stop the spindle. Now we're going to show a threading example, and we're going to do feed at uh, 11 threads per inch thread, and that's going to be ACWF5. So we're at A, C, W, F, and that's at five. Now we'll turn on the spindle and we'll engage the threading lever. Now that's feeding at 11 threads per inch. And we want to just thank you for your attention to this video. And please, please, please do not hesitate to call us if there are any questions. Our salespeople and our service people are here, and we are at your service. Thank you again, and we hope to talk to you soon.